My name is Dr. Michael Okoreki. I'm going to make this video to geometric design of the stents and I'll be walking you through the geometry, the boundary conditions, the material choices, the meshing, all the arguments basically to set up this model so that it can actually run within Abacus which is a final element tool that we're going to be using for, for this analysis. There will be another video which you would see um, later on on the second aspect which is analysis of the results the analysis of the result and subsequent uh, post processing uh, processes that you have to take if you're going to be modeling stands if this is your first time of visiting my channel I'll encourage you to please subscribe uh, so that you can get content like this so now here we are in in Abacus which is um, a commercial final element solver. I'm going to be using Abacus to do this, this setup. And I'm using the student edition uh, of, of Abacus. If you have a full version, that will even be better. So let's quickly import the model of the software that we, the model of the stent. So this particular stent model has already been created. So file import and then sketch. It's already been created in a third party software. So if we go in here, so I'm going to find the location where this file exists. So I've already created in a CAD model and it's saved as an SAT file, as an SAT file. So we're going to import it. So if you don't have the version, if you create it like in SOLIDWORKS, you need to save it in any of these formats and the formats that is acceptable or that are acceptable are the IGS format, the VDA format, the STEP file, this SAT. But I'm using the SAT file version um, for this. So if you click on the SAT file, so what this will do is it will give you the option to import the model into your workspace. So I select that and I click OK. You the option to come in here. So I'm going to change this file name to something that makes so stent geometry. So maybe we'll call it stent geom. So I'm going to import all the parts combine it into a single part and match every solid section. If you don't do this, then Abacus will give you, will break up the part into individual components and it can be difficult to manage. So the best thing is to merge into all solid sections. You can retain the intersecting boundaries, but I'll remove that because I want to have clean edges on the boundary of the stent. So click OK. So this will then import the model. So if you look here, it's scanning and it's importing the model for you. So it gives you some kind of progress. Of what is happening so it's creating the stain geom from geometry uh, and once that has been done it should come up on the window um, so we can see what what is going on so don't get alarmed when you see the this so this is a typical stain that we have and there's kind of a warning at the top and it says this part stain geom contains imprecise geometry which is highlighted partitioning or and quad hex meshing using the media as this algorithm Method on this imprecise section. So this is typically it's just a warning um, because this software was created in a, a super uh, powerful CAD. This jet was created in CAD. In this case, SolidWorks. And SolidWorks has higher mo geometric modeling capability than Abacus. So in which case, it's it's picking up things that normally Abacus wouldn't worry so much about. Which is warning that will help you would affect the quality of your mesh. But we're going to leave that for now and then you know focus so i'm going to dismiss dismiss this and then i have my model okay so there's a model of the stent that have been created uh, it looks a bit like a power mass squash stents if you know about stents and we are going to work with the stent to see if we can position it uh, ready for modeling so this is the first step so the first step is to get the geometry in the next step is we need to create the balloon, okay? Because this is a, uh, the stent would have a balloon that will um, be expanded. So I'm going to double click on parts. So if I double click on parts, I'm going to name that balloon, okay? So the balloon, because it's an, it's, it's an angioplastic procedure. So, and it's going to be a 3D modeling space, deformable. However, it's going to be shell because the balloon is a very thin structure. So it's best to model this as a shell. I'm going to choose to create this using a revolution. Revolution. 
and I'll explain that to you. So my balloon will probably be about four. You know, the diameter of the internal diameter of the stent is about 3.6 millimeters. So maybe something around 10 will be the appropriate stent size of the modeling space that we're going to work with here. So the balloon has to be created using a circle. So if we click on there and then, oh no, 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 sorry, that's the wrong thing. So because we want to use the, um, the revolution argument, so I'm going to, just going to create a straight line to represent the circle. So how big would this circle be? So I know that the length of this stent, the length of my stent is about 16. So let me just create something. Um, yeah, so let's, let's start with the internal diameter of the stent, which is the distance from here to there, should be about 1.25, okay? So one point, maybe two five, which will be the radius times two gives you 2.5, something like that. So on the X axis, I've got that. And on the Y axis, I probably get 7.5. So 7.5, or we could probably increase that because I think we'll see. So, so 1.5 on one, one, and then the other side is 1.5, two five again, and minus, 7.5 so I'm putting that information here so basically what I've done here is to um, create a straight line so if I zoom up and get the full view so cancel so I've got a straight line which I'm going to revolve so if I click done at the base here then it says how how am I going to revolve I want to revolve it 360 degrees to create the the circle okay so that gives me the shape of my balloon okay so what we need to do next is to assemble to bring it together so I go to instances and double click on the instance option so that will get me the two models so i select both of them don't worry about how they appear okay so that's this balloon oriented differently from the stands so they have to be rotated okay so they have to be rotated and there are different ways we're going to rotate that so what i'm going to select now in terms of rotating this is to select the stand so let me try and see if i can align the stand with the, the balloon within the stand so i'm going to use a circular radial pattern so i select the circular radial pattern at the top end there um, and select the stand click done so what it will do is that it will try to rotate this into different positions so you can see it's creating four rotations of that clearly this is the last one we want we want something that is oriented in the same direction as the stand so I'm going to un reduce the number of options that we want so that in the end we have only one one case okay so this is the original design this one is rotated along the direction of the stand so I'll click OK. So now this would be what we need. So fortunately, we don't need that. So I'll go back to instances and find the one that we don't need. So this is the original one. And this is the one that's been rotated. So I'm going to delete this. So you right click and delete that. OK. So now we have, so if you use the different views to just see what is happening okay so that looks looking from the top end you see something like that so i can take out perspective at the top end here turn off perspective so that at least we see what is going on inside the material so the next thing we need to do is that we need to move this into that position okay so we're going to move this into this position but before we do that let's try and find the center of this stent so during the card model design it didn't create a clear center for it so we have to find that so again i'll turn off perspective turn on perspective so i'm going to use try to find the center by looking at this point and that point together so we're going to do that right away so i'm going to use one of the options we have here about finding a center so we need to create an extra coordinate 
So if I click on this point, press and hold, so it will show me this option, okay, which is that you create a datum point midway between two points. So I select that and then it tries to find what the midways would be. So if I zoom in, if you zoom in, um, so I'm going to pick this point, which is one of the points, and then I find the corresponding point on the other side because they are all geometrically uh, positioned. So if I turn off perspective, so you could see we have our center point nicely positioned in the middle of the stent. So we're going to now use this center point to translate this medium into space. So we'll stop there. So we've created a point. Now the next thing is I'm going to translate which instance, this instance, okay, which is the balloon from the center of the balloon to the center of the circle. Okay, so you see now we have it geometrically uh, centered nicely and we're ready. So we can look at other views just to make sure that we're happy with what we've seen. Okay, so it looks kind of perfect. Um, Clearly, the length of the stent is not as accurate as I would want it. So if we change the assembly default from just assembly to instances. Okay. So part instances, part instances. So yeah. So if you look at part instances. So what we notice here is that the length of the stent that we have here is actually smaller than what we would want of the balloon. So we're going to make a modification. So I'll go back to balloon. If you if you had the, know the length of the balloon at the beginning of the stent, then you wouldn't have to go through this process. So I'll go back to to my shell right at this end and sketch. So if I double click on that, okay. So the problem is that I I underestimated the length of the stent, so we need to dimension this. So I'm going to select this option and then dimension the stent. So initially it was 15. So let's do maybe 18. Okay. So just make it longer as 18. You cancel the procedure and then done. So it will make the change, but to reflect that change, you go to the future at the top and click regenerate so that it creates a new stent of a longer length. So if we go back to the assembly module, you notice now that we have something longer. Okay. So we've got something longer, which, which is okay. But then we need to sort out how it's positioned within that space. So we need to move it inward. So again, I'm going to use a linear pattern. Okay which is the one at the top, a linear pattern. Click on the stand. Okay. So what this linear pattern will do, if you look at the figure here, so it's showing, so it's patterning, it's linear pattern lengthwise, topwise. So if you look at other views of that, you see it shows you how the pattern is forming. So it's moving upwards as well as lengthwise. So we need to move so if I untick the direction two, which is a vertical direction, then I only have the horizontal direction. Now, the length in question, so it's moving this as long as 18 um, millimeters, which is the length, original length. So why not let's try something like two, okay? So two, you could see where it's picked it up. So it's probably not, so if we try one, one is too small, four, four is too big, three, three is, so if we try 2.5, so 2.5 will mean we have a little bit here and a little bit there. So if we try three, three is too big, so two, okay, so maybe 2.8, 2.4, 2.3 okay so it's sort of a bit balanced 
Uh, but if you have the actual length, then you wouldn't have to do that. So it looks a bit balanced. So we'll click OK. So what we have here is that we have the original. So if you look here in the instances, okay, so we've got the original geometric design, which is obviously wrongly positioned. So I'm going to delete that. And then I now have the actual stent that we want. The idea is that I want to see if this, the balloon is just a little bit protruding out, out, out of the configuration of the stent, the length of the stent. But again, it's symmetric in both directions. So this is what we have here. The stent is now positioned laterally, longitudinally correctly. And if you look inside the view from the top, we'll also see that it's positioned correctly. Okay. So everything seems all right in this design. So for the view from the top, correct, lengthwise correct. So we've got the stand in position. So look at the 3D image of it. So that also looks correct. Um, and then the next bit is to try and mesh these models. So as part of setting up the model, so we'll try and mesh. So uh, if you look at the stand geometry, um, Okay, maybe we'll create materials for it. So we'll create the material. So this, we're creating a bioreservable stent. So this stent is going to be made from PLA. So one of the early designs of stents is made from PLA. So the elasticity of the stent, it's um, PLA is about 1 point, about 2. So let's see, it's 1.278419. So this is values are derived from an experiment. 0 0.40 is that, and the plastic stress the plastic plasticity of it is um i think it's 60 megapascal with a plastic strain of zero okay so these are the values that we we'll probably need to create a material for the stent so what about the balloon so we double click on balloon and the same material so we have an option for creating. So this will be balloon material, okay? So the balloon material would have, we're going to treat it as elastic. Of course, you can treat it as hyperelastic. But let's start with an elastic. Traditionally, so E 0 0.9 mega gigapascal is the modulus of a, and then we're going to treat it, you know, maybe 0 0.33 or something like that. So we'll not allow it to yield. So we're going to leave that. So if you go to the section, so we'll create a section. So for the stent PLA section. So I'm going to model it as a solid homogeneous element. Okay, solid homogeneous element. Select the material, obviously the material here will be the stent PLA. Okay, for the balloon, there are different ways you can do this. So let's say balloon, balloon section. So it was created as a shell element. Okay. So we're going to model it as a shell, shell element. Um, different things you can model it as surface element, um, a membrane element. Um, but let's just model it as a homogeneous shell element. So you continue. Now, so during the analysis, this balloon has a thickness of 0 0.06 millimeters. It's a very tiny balloon. The material type that we've created for this balloon is clearly the balloon material. So our shell thickness is defined by that. Um, there's nothing else we need to do here. So we'll finish with creating that. So the next thing we need to do is to assign these different sections so if you think about the section so section assignment for the stent so we go to the section assignment we'll click on the section assignment so what this will do is that it will load up the the stent so we we'll select the stent so create a set for it so set stent body so let's call it stent body okay and click done so now what section do we want to assign for this stent so obviously we've created this 10 PLA section. So we'll select that and click OK. Okay, so this now, the model has associated the geometry 
with this material that we created for it so the color has changed in this property module so we now know what we we have so we'll do the same for the balloon so if we go back to the balloon section so again a section assignment so you double click on section assignment in the balloon section okay so I, I select balloon so I could call that the balloon body which basically is a set for the balloon now it's picked it up already as a shell element we don't have to you know to do anything for it so the shell offset is based on the mid surface so everything is fine as default we select that okay so now let's put those together in the assembly module just to make sure so everything looks all right still all right so just to check that the materials are right so again i'll zoom in into the materials section not the load so the materials to see whether the materials are properly assigned so there's clear difference between the stand and the balloon so that means they are created with different materials so we're happy with that step now we need to mesh so we need to mesh so first i'll go to the balloon to mesh so currently it's saying that the mesh is empty so that means it doesn't have a pre-existing mesh so i double click on the balloon okay so i get into the balloon state so first thing we need to do is we need to um we need to seed that part so right at the top end here you've got the option of seeding if you click on that you see the part so it's predicting that 1.8 will be a suitable thing i don't think so so i'm going to divide that maybe by four so 0 0.45 so because Abacus always uses 10% of the longest edge. So the longest edge is 18. So 10% of that is 1.8. But I think we need more. So I'm going to use about 2.5% of the longest edge. So we'll see. So we'll click on that. So it's seeded. So I'm going to go over to assigning the kind of mesh control that we need. So I'm going to discretize this domain. I think quad quadrilaterals or quad dominated will be fine. So it's going to be a free meshing with along the medial axis. These are options that are available in Abacus. Again, if you don't know about them, go and read the Abacus manual to understand what they mean. So what kind of mesh are we going to assign the element type we need? So we click on assigning the element type. So we select that and then click done. So there are different element types. So we just scroll down in the family. So it's already picked up because we have a shell section. So it's picked up that we need a shell element. And the element type would obviously be quadrilateral because that's what we selected. And every other thing we leave them as default. So we'll click OK. OK. So that means we now have the model element associated quad type. So the final thing is to look at what the shell mesh will look like. So if you click on here, so you're going to mesh the part. And then at the foot here, I said, okay, to mesh the part. Yes, I'm happy for you to go ahead and mesh the part. So, and then we have the design of the mesh. So it, it looks all right. I mean, of course, you can go ahead and discretize it further. But I think 2.5% of the longest edge as a seat side, it seems as suitable, seems acceptable. Okay. So we'll, we'll close this tree for balloon and then go to the tree for the mesh for the stand geometry. So if we double click on the stand geometry here, of course, it comes up with this kind of color, which suggests that the existing library of elements, um, library of mesh geometry, uh, no, the existing mesh controls might not work for it the default one chosen so but let's see it so it's picking 0.84 i think 0.84 is fine but again i like to always go so if we reduce that to 0.42 tell it to apply that seed okay and then we'll select a mesh control because of the complexity of this geometry if we select hex it's saying it's saying that hex will not be suitable okay as a meshing control because these are the color that define the kind of meshes that it will use hex dominated might not be suitable uh, 10 tets 
probably suitable. I would normally go with pets. Some people will go with wedges, but let's use pets. Okay, tetrahedrons. It will always match any complex shape, you know, as much as possible. So, and then at the end, you click OK. So it's picked up in good color. It thinks that this is doable because it's using the color that defines the mesh for tets. So what mesh control are we going to use? Again, you select that and find again what would be the family is finding. So right at the top here, you've got a 3D stress continuum element. It's thinking because it's tetrahedron, it needs a quadratic um, geometric order. It's fine, so we can accept this. Of course, be careful how you use um, this because the element choice that you've chosen will significantly affect the kind of output you get. So just be careful that you know what you're doing um, and do a bit of mesh, mesh study later on to make sure you understand the effect of those meshes on the model. So again, we mesh the part. So you go to the top and click mesh and then yes. So that gives you an idea. So it, it runs through um, and meshes the model. It's optimizing it for mesh from linear to quadratic. And then it's giving you the progress report and you sort of have something that could be, you know, acceptable. Although you could go ahead and further mesh this to improve the refinement of the model. Um, but at the moment, you know, this looks sort of acceptable. Well, of course, I probably would go, go further down to mesh it. So let's just reseed that. So I'll reseed it and change it to something smaller. Let's say 2-1. Okay, so it wants me to delete the pre-existing mesh. Then I'll just go ahead and mesh it again. So if I mesh this, just to improve the quality of the mesh. So 0.21 is an acceptable mesh size for this. I mean, you can keep going down, but of course you don't want to mesh it too finely because then you probably start struggling with the computational time. So this looks sort of okay. So I'm quite happy with this mesh um, density, this mesh uh, refinement. So again, I'll put the two together in the assembly module just to have a feel. And then I'll click the mesh at the top end here to activate. So it looks sort of all right now. So the, the reasonable mesh quality, of course you can keep fine tuning the mesh just to get a better result later on. But let's, let's work with that. So we selected the material steps, everything. Um, now we need to for define because this is going to be modeled with an internal pressure inside. So we are going to, the next thing that I'm going to do now is to impose um, points in the model that I'm going to use to extract stress histories, stress histories. So I'm going to go back to my stent, okay? The stent geometry and create a set, okay? But before I do that, let's hide Okay, no, no, I think we can do this. So if double click on the set, so this gives me the model of my stent. Okay, so now I'm going to call this my reference, reference nodes. So I'm going to use this reference node later on to create um, structural parameters, to extract structural parameters associated with this stent. So we're just going to work with that now. So I click continue. So if I change this to this view, um, okay, so if I change it to this view, so the two points that I'm going to work with are these two points. So I'll pick this, okay, and press down shift and then select the next one. Okay, then I'll pick the point on, the, on that same line on the other side and the other point on the same line on the other side. So this is essential because I'm going to be tracking the history of the formation associated with this tent using those. So what I did was I pressed down shift on the keyboard and was able to select these multiple points. And then you click done. So now if I go back into the step module, into the set, and I select that so you can see it's picked it up clearly. If I select the stent, it keep picked up the stent. So if I change the path default, to set so it will highlight those points clearly for me so the stand and the reference point that we picked up which we are going to track later on so if i look at the side view of this 
So it shows where those reference points are. If I take a ton of perspective, it shows that they are kind of almost coincident along that line, which is ideal, which is what we want. So we want to track laterally what's happening as the stent expands and contracts. We track the movement of those points. Diametrically, radially, we'll also track the movement of that. But we're going to just note that for now. The other thing that we're going to do, so if we go back to the side view and then our turn off perspective again, turn on perspective. So the next thing I'm going to do is to create surfaces, the internal surface of this tent. So if I click surfaces, so I'm going to call it the inside soft of stent. Okay, inside surface of stent. So I'll click the region inside and press down shift again and highlight. So this gets me the region inside the stent as a surface, then I click OK. We're going to use that to create interactions in that. So we need this inside surface of the stent. Okay. And the same thing we do with the balloon. So we'll just leave that. Then we'll go to the balloon section. So if I open up the balloon, we need to create a surface. So that we'll click on the surface of the balloon, go to the side view again. Yeah. Which is it? view okay so so this will be the outside surface of the balloon so because the loading will be from the outside of the balloon to the inside okay outside of the balloon to the inside so click continue now select the region so we want this region done but because this is a shell which is quite a thin element so it's saying which section are you choosing is it the inside section which is basically orange or brown or the outside section which is purple so i want the outside okay so i want the outside of this balloon okay now if we put all those together go back to the assembly module so you could see let me just turn off this mesh so what you will see now is that we have and then we can change to the surface um, view so if we change to surfaces, so this will give us an idea of what we have tried to do in terms of the surfaces. So there is an inside surface, an outside surface, clearly defined. If we rotate, you can see that inside and outside surface clearly defined. It's not very apparent here, but this is what we want to do. So we've done that, okay? So we've done that. Then the next thing we need to do next so after you've done this, so let's create a step file for this. So, you know, expand, contract, ex, you know, loading step. Well, I call it a loading step. And I'm going to use a static general. So my file name is loading step static general and click continue. Okay, so the window comes up so obviously you can describe the step. So I'm going to leave it as a time period of one. But one thing that is most important is that you need to set this control nonlinear geometric effects to on because this deformation associated with this is quite high to on. You can specify an energy dissipation function on all that or you leave it. But let's use the very first one and accept everything at default. Um, then you click OK. All right. So now that step is done. So the other thing is that we need to create some history outputs. So these are the variables that you need if you are going to um, track the deformation of this body. So I'll click on that, double click on history outputs. I'm going to call it the reference notes history. Okay, reference note history is going to be associated with the loading step. So you click continue. Okay, so with what do we, our domain obviously has to be the set that we want to track, not the whole model. We don't want to track everything happening in the whole model. We only want to track what is associated with a certain step. So there is this reference node step. So that's what we are tracking. A set of those four points on the, on the stand geometry, we want to use them later on to track the behavior. And the things that we want really are the displacements. So if I open the displacements, okay, especially the translational displacement, the U. 
So the UT, which is the set of translational displacements, which is U, U1, U2, U3. Now we go back, go all the way to the coordinates. So we also want to track the coordinates positions of those points. So again, I'll scroll all the way down and look at the coordinates, which is the coordinate, the nodal coordinates in X, Y, Z, where one is X, two is Y, and three is Z. So I want all displacements as well as nodal coordinates. Okay, the nodal coordinates. And then that's what I'm going to track later on to be able to generate some structural parameters for these things to be able to quantify his behavior. So we need that stated. So we've created that history output. So we need to also create some sort of interactions because this model has to interact with one another. The stent, the balloon expanding has to interact with the stent. So create an interaction property. So so we can leave that as a contact mode. Um, so what kind of mechanical loading tangential behavior penalty with a frictional coefficient of 0 0.2. I mean, you can, in literature, this is typically the number that they use, but of course you can start maybe with a frictionless case. So basically this is what happens when this balloon expands and touches the wall of the stent. There has to be some kind of frictional transfer so that there has to be an energy, well, not a trick. So there has to be um, a reaction force impacted on the stent in order to cause the opening. So we use this uh, penalty option friction formulation, which is a, a quotient of friction to, to do that. So this is our interaction behavior. So what about the interactions we need? So now the actual interaction, what happens when they make in contact? So, so I'm going to call this stent to balloon contact. Okay. As I say with the leading step, it's a surface to surface contact. So one surface touching another surface will be ideal. So we'll continue. Now it says first select the master surface. So either I select it on this, but I already created them. So I'll go to the right side here and click on surfaces. Okay. So um, the first one, so if I highlight this on the viewport, so you see the first one shows me I'm selecting the outside of the balloon, which is a master surface. Continue. Now choose a slave. So what is going to be driven by the behavior of the other? So it's going to be another surface, but this time around it will be the inside of the stent. So you click continue. Okay. So we have selected the master and the, surf and the slave, the master being the outside wall of the stent, of the balloon, and the slave being the inside surface of the stent. Can allow for finite sliding or small, so I accept all this default. The contact interaction property has already been defined, so it picks it up as a contact to drive this process. So then, so that's what we need. So it does now show you on the model that there is a bit of this square constraint, telling that there is a bit of contact between the two surfaces. If we switch to interactions, so again, it does show you that there is an interaction between the inner surface and outside surface, but you can't see it very well in, in, this, in this view. Okay, so that's interactions done. So we need to create an amplitude, how we want the loading to be. So I click on double click on amplitude, but because what we have, so it's a stand, so there's an expansion and contraction step. So it expands and contracts. So we use expand contract. We've already selected in our step that this whole thing should happen within one second. So we we'll start from zero, zero amplitude. After 0 0.45 seconds, we are ready to go full expansion. Hold it at that expansion for another point, one second, still, and then finally bring it down to zero. So what this basically is showing is that you start from zero, you go up to a full expansion of one, whatever, you know, one amplitude after 0.45 seconds, hold it for another 0.1 second and then bring it down. So this is the expand, hold and deflate step. So this is how we're going to, so uh, what is this? So no, so this has to be one. So after one second, 
so from 0 0.5, 0 0.45, 0.5, and then 1, and then we're, we're done. So we have created the amplitude associated with this. The other thing that we now need is, as part of, is to impose a load onto this model. But because it's a radial expansion, we're not going to use traditional X, Y, Z loading scheme. We're going to use a cylindrical coordinate system for this. So we're going to create a cylindrical coordinate system. So if you look here, so it gives us the option of create. No. So if we press and hold, no. So let's find which one we need to use. Okay. Yes. So if you click on that, so it gives us the option. So I'm going to change it to cylindrical coordinate system and call this cylindrical um, okay cylindrical coordinate system so we'll click continue now so there's a lot going on here okay in terms of how we're going to define this so let's basically go to the front view okay and turn off perspective okay so to make this easier for myself, I'm going to hide. So if I go back off, so I'm, I'm go back off and then I'm going to hide. So remove selected. And what I'm going to select is the balloon. So I'm going to remove the balloon. Okay, done. So this will take away the balloon, leaving only the so the balloon, um, okay, let's just roll around and see. Yes, so it's taking away the balloon. So maybe we should just go back to parts, default. So yes, so if take away the balloon, leaving only the, the stand. So I'll then go back to this view, okay? And then turn off perspective, turn on perspective. So that gives me this window that I want. So if I zoom in, okay, no, 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 no. so if I draw a box around this, okay, so I'll cancel. Now it said, so let's go back. If I click on this, so I want to cylindrical coordinates. So I select cylindrical and then click continue. So the center of that will be there. And it's saying, can you pick up a point? that defines the radial position. So I'll use any point there, and then can you pick up another point? So any other point there. Okay. So that's created my cylindrical coordinate system. So if I look at it on the side view, or, or maybe still on that view, the turn of perspective so that we can see if everything is perfectly arranged. So what it sees here is that the Z axis, the T axis, and the radial direction. So let's see if what, that's what we need. Okay. So that's the tangential, the Z direction, and the radial direction, I think is lengthwise. So, okay, so I'm not happy with that, so I'm going to delete that feature, I'm going to delete that feature, so I'll go back to the view that I want to work with, turn on perspective, and then So get it into view okay so now I'm going to go back to the assembly under feature cylindrical coordinate I'm going to delete that because I'm not happy with that particular selection of the cylindrical coordinate then I'll go back here to create cylindrical coordinates okay the cylindrical continue so the center will be the center that we created. 
So select a point on the L axis. So we want it to be a point here. Okay, so this is my radial direction. Select a point on the theta axis. So anything on the vertical side here. So I'll select the one on the outermost. Maybe this one is fine. Okay. So that looks better now. So I've got the radial and the tangential direction. And then the inside direction is the, the Z axis as it should be. Okay, so that looks correct. Um, and then the next thing we're going to do, so we'll associate it with that. So we apply a load, okay. So let's apply a load. So I'm going to call this my radial load, okay. Using the displacement rotation, continue. So where do we want to apply that load? So we could apply it select a viewport so I could apply that load on the balloon itself so highlight so now the balloon doesn't exist so I'm going to replace the balloon here by going to the top end so I replace the balloon so I've selected the balloon now so I want to apply that load directly on the balloon okay and it basically means which direction am I looking for so my radial direction is the one direction so i'm going to apply this is 1.25 in radius so if we do 1.25 again which means i'm expanding it radially by 100 percent and the other ones i'll just check them so i'm positioning the body to to be reinforced to be held back in those direction and then expand contract as my amplitude which we've already created the expand contract which is the amplitude we created so we'll click ok so um okay there is a mistake so we'll go back there and this is really important so if i show you what what's happening here so if you look at the side view again um okay so you can see the loading is applied in the global x direction which is not what we want so we double click on that change the, from the coordinate system from a global reference frame to one that we have, which is the datum, the cylindrical reference frame that we created. So, and then click OK. So this now gives you the right kind of expansion profile. Okay, so expansion profile, if you turn off perspective, it does show you the expansion that we want radially opening up um, in, <clears throat> in three dimension, in, in a radial sense. So which will mean that the balloon now will be able to expand and due to the contact specified it can touch this then um the stent and then impose loading onto it so this is really what we need to do so if we then double click on jobs so job so maybe i'll, I'll call that the stent um radial expand radial loading simulation one continue okay so then you right click and submit but we're going to do that on a different video to look at the outputs but for right click you submit the job and then it's ready for you to use and that's what we have we, we set out to do to set out the geometric modeling of the stent building it assembling with the balloon and getting it ready applying all the necessary boundary conditions and select and it should go and it will work fine. So I hope you find that very useful and um, 